Hi, I'm Dennis Saylor. The video you're about to see was created over 20 years ago, but we still get a lot of questions on our older machines, so we're making it available online. Hello, I'm Dennis Saylor with Dixie Narco, and I'll be your guide as we go through this video production. The purpose of this production is to walk you through the programming features of the glass front vendor by Dixie Narco. So let's get started. To enter into the programming functions, open the service door and located on the back side of the display board is the mode button. Pressing that button will enter you into the mode. There's actually three different modes to be concerned with. Pressing it one time takes you into the service mode. Pressing the button again will take you into the test mode. And then one time again will take you into the setup mode. Each of these three modes has their own set of functions within that mode. Each of those functions has an associated key on the keypad that will take you directly to that. The reference card on the inside will give you the indication of what key takes you to the particular function. Or you can utilize the letter A to scroll from function to function. Let's go into the service mode and view that a little more. Button A, Cash box readings is what comes up. Basically, this is your counter for the uh, amount of cash that's come in since the last counter reading or uh, master reset. Press button A again. It takes us to sales. This is, again, how many VINs have occurred since the uh, last master reset or counter reading. Number sold is the next feature that comes up. It'll scroll the, the prompt of number sold and then the actual number after that. Pressing button A to go to the next feature will be sales by column. It'll scroll that across. We can enter it in, and it's going to ask, enter in by pressing the star key. It's going to ask then what items. I'm, if I'm curious about B9, it'll say B9, it'll give me a total on that. And you know, I can go through the entire thing that way. Go into each one. We can clear the totals. This will clear the totals out for your cash box and your sales feature. Pressing the star key says OK, and we zero those numbers out. Now what you want to do is, using the keypad, enter in your VIN price. So if I want to say a dollar VIN price, if I want to set the entire machine for a dollar, I hit the star again. If I want to set uh, just a tray for a dollar, I have the dollar, then the A, then the star key. Then if I want to say 95 cents for the B tray, enter in the star key. And then a dollar 25 for C, D, and E, or C, star, E, star. And now I've set the machine for multiple VIN pricing. Set happy hour pricing, same thing. You can have reduced pricing, increased pricing. We enter into this, and it, and it wants to know the VIN prices first. So we're, let's say we're going to uh, sell everything at 50 cents, and we're set at 50 cents on that. Enable items. This is a, a feature where we can lock out certain items uh, for certain times. Uh, basically, we enter into that with pressing the star key. It's asking for the item. And we can say A1, uh, A2, and after it beeps after each one. And let's say that I want to do all of B. Locking it in, C, and so on. You get the idea of how that's accomplished. So what I've done is I've, I've put a, a time limit or a, a locking these features, these certain selections out on this feature. Pressing button A, the next feature is escrow, and you'll notice there's an N out the side of that. Escrow N means no. Uh, basically, it's saying, I don't want to escrow the dollar bill. I want to stack it uh, on every, every uh, insertion of the dollar bill. We can change that by pressing the star. It just toggles between the yes and the no. Force VIN. Uh, force VIN no, you can basically force someone to make a purchase once they reach the minimum VIN price. If you, know, if you have multiple pricing through the selections in the vending machine and they have met the minimum VIN price, by turning this to a yes by pressing the star, uh, that locks them into a purchase. They have to purchase something of that value. They can't get their money back. Up until they reach that point 
uh, they can uh, hit the reject button and get their cash back. But once they reach the minimum VIN price, they're locked in if that is on a Y instead of an N. Display temperature. Now, if the vending machine has a temperature sensor equipped, going into this mode will allow you to display the temperature along with a scrolling message that goes across. Uh, some of the vending machines have the temperature sensor, some of the machines do not. Set cooldown mode. This allows you to uh, basically put the machine on a timer feature that when loading the machine up initially with uh, warm product, uh, you don't necessarily want to be able to vend, have them purchasing warm product. So you can go in and initiate a set cooldown function. Enter into that by pressing the star key and it's going to ask for the item. If I want to set the entire vending machine, basically I have three different functions. I can set the entire vending machine on cooldown by pressing the star key and that initiates the cooldown for the entire machine. Or I can press an individual tray. If I just loaded new product on one tray, I could lock that one tray out and keep anyone from purchasing until it cools down. Or I can go to the individual selections if there was just one or two selections that I wanted to do by pressing those selections on the keypad. But for video's sake, we'll just do the entire vending machine. Pressing the uh, star key, it said OK momentarily and it went back to, uh, to item. At this point, I can hit the clear key and I'm, I'm out of it. Now what I've done is initiate a 240 minute uh, time frame that will lock purchasing out for the entire vending machine until it has time to cool down the product. Now the next feature is test vins. We can enter in and now it's going to ask for an item. If I want to fire A1, I press A1. If I want to do E9, I, you know, I just press E9 and it fires whichever one I press on the keypad. And then the last feature in this service mode is your clear errors. Any errors that were on the machine, we can go in and clear them and it says OK and it takes me back to the service mode prompt. So that'll conclude everything in the service mode feature. Let's go take a look now. We'll press the service mode button one more time and go into the test mode. Button A will take us into the first one and it'll say list errors. It says no error. Had there been a fault, it would list the errors. Now these errors are listed in the service manual that we provide with the vending machine. The next feature by pressing button A is a self-test. What it does is it fires all 45 of these gates uh, in succession very rapidly and comes up and says errors and lists the nine. The reason it's saying errors nine at the end of that is because if you notice the keypad goes to F, we only have nine or have uh, five trays instead of six. So it's looking for those nine solenoids that would be associated with a tray F if the machine were set up for that. So if you're working with this configuration of five trays, it's going to give you that errors nine every time. We can initiate a display test next by pressing the letter A, pressing the star key, and it will light up all the center figures in the, the display on each of the eight characters. We can do a keypad test next, enter into it, and it's just going to respond to whatever key I press, and it's just going to scroll them across the front as I enter in each of the numbers, ending with the clear, and it takes me back to the test mode. This next function is auto sequence. Now by initiating that, um, it'll start firing some of the gates, so we'll go ahead and do that. And what it was doing is, that as it was firing, because it starts at A1 and works itself through, if you let it go, it'll work itself through from A1 all the way through to E9, firing all 45. As it fires it, it displays that solenoid's location number on the display, followed by an OK if it vended and, and it recognized that power feed to it, or it would give an NC indicating that it was a, a fault with it. So letting it go through that, it'll test all 45 of the solenoids. So the next function allows you to go into the tube fill and dispense mode. This is an important feature, especially utilizing the electronics and utilizing a bill validator. The 
controller in the vending machine really doesn't know how many coins are in the mechanism if you fill just the slots in the, in the mech itself. By going into the tube fill mode and inserting coins through the slot, they're introduced into the coin mech and counted and, and put into their proper tube. It registers them on the display as you enter the, in them in there. And you can go to and scroll and dispense utilizing the star key. Enable daylight savings time is the next feature that comes up. We can enter into that and basically it says okay. It's a preset time frame when it enables and disables the, the daylight savings time. The set not available mode, we can cancel that or we can turn it on basically by changing it from a, a Y for yes and N for no. The next function, pressing button A, will take us to set credit timer. What this allows the service technician to do is to change it from a five minute time limit to an indefinite time limit. The cancel N will give you a five minute time limit. Toggling to the Y will give you an indefinite time limit. What that does is allows the consumer to set up a credit and give them an indefinite amount of time as far as what selection they want to press without fear of losing the credit. If it was on cancel in, it would have been a five minute time limit and then would have eaten that credit. The next function is your door open. It will list how many times the door has been open since the last master reset or clear totals. If, um, that's the service door as the, that's, that's triggered by the service switch that's on the, or the door switch that's located in the cabinet in the service area. Every time that switch breaks, it will uh, count how many times the door has been open and then list them if there's uh, up to five times, the last five times. From door open, we scroll to the next feature, which is power outages. If there's been any power outages, it would list those as well, giving the last uh, five times and it would list the dates and times that they, the power outages occurred. The test health guard, uh, if the machine is, is equipped with a health guard for vending dairy products, you can go in and test this feature. This is not a, a standard feature in the normal vending machine. It'll just be in uh, machines that are handling the, the dairy products. Display Health Guard is the next feature that comes up on the display. What this does is if you have the Health Guard uh, initiated on some of the selections, pressing the star key and holding it, it will list those uh, selections that are affected by that Health Guard. And once you release it, it will go back to just reading the Health Guard or test Display Health Guard. Next feature is Test Vend. We enter into it by pressing the star key again, and now it's asking for the item. If I want to test vent, if I, there's been a problem with B9, and I did some work on B9, I can go in and select that, and it will actually fire that solenoid, activating that gate, just to confirm that it's functioning properly. Same way, any selection that I press, it will do that. Clear errors is the next prompt that comes up by pressing the A key. What this does is after you've gone in, you've listed the errors, you've, you've checked it out, you've fixed all the problems that, that were there, if there were any, you want to go in and clear those errors. Otherwise, it will bank those, those error codes listed in there. So you just go in, pressing the star key, it'll confirm it with an OK, and then go back to reading the, the test mode prompt going across there. And that should conclude all the items in the test mode feature. Let's move on now by pressing the mode button on the back of the display one more time and go to the setup mode. Entering into the setup mode will function just the same way using the, the A key. Some of the functions as you notice as we go through them will require entering of a passcode and we'll get into those and, and uh, discuss those as we get to them. So we start with pressing button A, enter message. The scrolling message that goes across here, you can press in the, uh, the star key and what it'll do is uh, give you the letter A and just scrolling with, with the letter A to the 
first letter of the first word that you want to go in there, enter it in, and you can just put any combination of letters and spaces that you want just using the star key and the letter A to take you into that. The next feature is clear message. If the, the existing message that's in there, actually you would want to go into this first, clear that out and start over from, from a zero clear message prompt. Then go back into the uh, set message and enter in the message that you would want to do. But to clear the message that's in there, press the star key and it clears that scrolling message across, that goes across in the normal mode, clears it out of there. Disable dollar sign is the next function that comes up. What this does is it allows the service technician to remove or not display the dollar symbol in the VIN price when it's setting on there. If you had the machine on a, a single price mode, it would display the VIN price on the machine, and you could take that dollar symbol off or put the dollar symbol in in this mode. Clear cooldown is the next function. What this does is it clears the the selections that you put in in the setup mode on the, the cooldown settings, you can clear those out and, and turn, basically turns that cooldown function off. So we enter in again, we get the OK saying that that was done. This next feature is Master Reset. Master Reset, to initiate it, we press the star key like you have in all the other prompts that comes up. What happens is it will confirm that it has initiated the master reset by flashing an OK momentarily, and then it will go back to the idle message, uh, taking you out of all the service prompt modes. A word of caution to doing this is that when you initiate the master reset, it clears all of your sales totals. So you want to be uh, very sure that this is something you want to do before initiating it. Next function will take us to machine number. What it will do is it will display the current ID number. I can hit star and then I can enter in up to a four digit number indicating a new asset number for this machine. The so next feature is set happy hour. Enter into it and I ask for a start time and it wants to know the hour. So we're going to say at, um, at five o'clock in the evening which is going to be um, 1700 hours. Then the minutes, we're going to leave it zero, is the start time. And the end time, it wants hours, so we're going to do 1730. And it wants to know what days. And we can scroll through to the days, changing it from a yes or a, or a no with the letter A and using the star key to go to the days that we want. So we're going to take it to, say, Friday, change it to a yes, and get out of it. So we we did the um, happy hour time at Friday at 5 o'clock till 5.30. Set not available times, or set not available time, yes, we enter into it. It's asking for a start time. Again, it's going to be setting hours and minutes as we did in the past one. So we're, you know, the last one we just did. So we're not going to go into this again and, and do that one more time. Winter mode. Now, winter mode, what this does is by initiating this, changing this, or initiating by, by hitting the star key, it takes the machine and sets it into a happy hour winter, not a happy hour, but a winter mode. The winter being at any random time uh, based on the vents, you know, how many number of vents you install here, it will vent a free drink and it's not a, an item specific drink. It's at random, all 45 of them, any one of those could be the free one that it vents. and we enter in the number here, the 200th vend, it will give away a free drink. Date and time allows you to uh, set the current date and time of the vending machine so that you, when you're activating these timing features, it has a starting point. Enter into this, 
and it's going to ask for the month. I can change the month to read uh, using the keypads, the numbers on the keypad. Let's just say 12th month, and then the date of 01. The year of 01 is already set, and you can change that to 02 or, or 12 or any other number that you want, but we'll put it back at 01. And the hour, you can set the time, it's military time. 16 is a good time here, it's be 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 1600. And the minutes going after that would be 12, that's, that's we just leave that alone. So what we've done is we did the date and time setting for the month, day, year, and then the hours and minutes for the, uh, for the time. And keep in mind that it's a military time feature that you're setting. Total sales. It comes up next by pressing button A, and it just, it'll display a total dollar amount of sales on this vending machine. It's a historical number. The next feature is enable the health guard. And this is where you go in and enable the items that you want to do it. So let's say we were doing uh, dairy items on, on all of C. So we'll just say C star and it's enabled on C. And that was the only thing we wanted to do it on, so at that point in time, we, we're out of that mode, and, uh, and it's going to be uh, on, guarding, you're looking for the health guard on those items. If the temperature were to raise above the set limit for a safe uh, dairy product consumption, it would disable those items during that time frame. Enable drop sensor is the next feature. What this does, it allows in the programming, if a consumer were to walk up and press an empty selection, let's say A6 was empty, and they were looking at A5, but they actually hit A6 instead of the A5, it's going to vend A6. Nothing's going to drop, go past because there's an a electric sensor that goes across the, uh, the delivery chute uh, recovery unit. And uh, if nothing drops past that, up to three times, it allows you to go back and make uh, another attempt in case you, you, per, you hit the wrong selection and actually vended an empty selection. So you get to go back at another try and do that. What happens here, though, is sometimes there's instances where um, someone may try to defeat this by, uh, by holding the delivery flap on the recovery unit and try to get a free drink without letting something drop past that. What you can do is disable this by entering in and it just toggled and changed from that. And uh, what it does is after one vend, regardless of how, you know, if it vended uh, an empty selection or not, the credit is canceled. Set cooldown times is the 240 minutes. As earlier, if you remember in the, in the earlier functions, it was uh, setting this feature, enabling it. Now we're actually going to set the time, and the default is 240 minutes, but we can change that to, uh, let's just say, 30 minutes because we had some pre-cooled drinks that you put in there and it didn't need to be that long. So you lock it in at, at 30 minutes instead of a 240 minute time frame. And the 240 is the maximum, it's also the, the default, but you can change that to any time frame up to 240 minutes. Enter new password is the next function. When the machine comes from the factory, it's set at four zeros being the, the passcode. Now this is where it comes up and asks for the password protection. First of all, it wants to know what the current passcode is. And we enter in four zeros and it says okay. If I wanted to change that, we go into this and change it from four zeros to four ones instead. So we just enter in, enter the new passcode in. Now it's four zeros. Instead of four zeros, it's four ones. And that takes us through to the end of that function as well. So that concludes all of the different uh, test modes, setup modes, and service mode functions. I trust you found this video useful. Be sure to check out the rest of our videos in the link in this video's description.